Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another episode of the Ultimate Track Guide series. We're at British GT again, this time we're in GT4, we're in an Alpine, uh, and of course we're at Alton Park uh, Track, which is characterised by these huge changing gradients, bumps, blind crests, several tight chicanes, really really difficult to get right, really 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 tough to race consistently in both classes but today we're in GT4 avoiding those bumps if you're not subbed to the channel already then make sure you hit that button and the little bell icon and I'd like to announce that channel memberships are available now if you'd like to support the channel in, in more ways than, than just um, the way you do at the minute so also uh, join the discord we've got a wealth of knowledge in there the link is in the description let's dive into the track guide because this is this is a tough one. This is Alton Park in GT4. So slightly different uh, start to this track guide. Then I'm going to play through this first sector a couple of times because I did my lap and then actually on the next lap I, I really beat this first sector. So while this is a good example, it's just to show you sort of the actual lap that I was, I was doing. There's a better example that I'll show just, just after this one. It's really, really bumpy on the inside there. We'll get into more detail in a second. But you see, I just missed a couple of apexes here and just wanted to illustrate that that's okay. You can still get a good time by just carrying some good mid-corner speed in this car, especially in GT4. Now we're into the real one. Then I'll play it full fully and then we'll break it down. So really, really tight on the inside getting the power down on that compression on the first curb you can run a little bit wide but not too much because the penalty line there is really really quite tight braking before that bump nice and tight carrying that mid speed so gt4 is all about mid corner speed and smooth exits whereas in gt3 we talk about planting the throttle and using the steering to 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 help you guide through gt4 it's all about smooth throttle application the first corner then the first breaking point we come to there's just this little tiny grass mark on the left hand side it's almost where the white line looks like it changes color to be slightly more faint and that's where we're going to be using our braking. And it's similar to a lot of things we do. It's hard on the brakes to start with, but immediately coming off them so we can get the turn in into this relatively long first corner. It's all about getting some good rotation here because the penalty line is pretty tight on, on the exit. So you're going to be aiming for that inside curb. And as soon as you feel the compression, so this, just to illustrate how quickly I'm coming off the brakes here, we've barely had any, any time on the brakes. We're already starting to turn. So we're already in that trail braking mindset, which is crucial. Using the throttle to balance the car as soon as we feel this compression on this curve through old hall the first corner we get back on the pound sort of three quarters and as soon as we're confident we can run a little bit wide this is pretty much as wide as you want to be if you're as wide as this earlier on in the corner you're going to get penalty so make sure you're through the corner you've got that rotation and away through the avenue we go into what is officially the second corner i just wanted to point out i think it's weird they tell you it's it's a left hander and then you have to turn right first anyway so we turn right Really, really, probably, you know, one of the top three most difficult braking points on the track, this, because in line with this Pirelli sign on the right-hand side through Denton, so you've got this huge bump. At all costs, you must avoid pressing the brake on this bump, uh, or, or starting to press the, the brake, rather. So my way of taking this corner is that I, I brake slightly earlier than the bump in whatever car it is, and then if I need to speed up a little bit or just adjust where the car is on the track, I use the throttle to do that rather than the brake. So you need to slow down a little bit to get that initial turn in, and then carry more speed through the actual centre of the car, through the apex of the corner, and, and then obviously it's really important to get a clean exit on this one. So we're using the throttle here just to adjust the uh, the car. So you can see I'm back actually about 50% throttle. Just just while I'm still going downhill, I've got that turn in. I feel like I can, I can take the grip a little bit more. The car's not understeering. Still on the brake a little bit. So we're doing that sort of marrying up the throttle and the brake, which we talked about quite a lot on some of the other track guys. And as soon as I know I'm clear, as soon as the nose bites, I'm back on the power. I have a couple of stabs at it but much better than the other one and we're through onto Lakeside straight into Island Corner which is the next one. So have another look at it again in full speed and I know we've done this once but just to talk through again using the brake really modulate that brake and using the throttle to to adjust the car get it driving that little bit of understeer or oversteer whatever we feel we need at that point. Pass the right, the left hand sign into the right hander braking before that bump 
using their throttle again just that little period of where there's nothing happening which is crucial in gt4 whereas you don't really want that in gt3 right we will do a track guide on on gt3 and and i know that's a relatively short first sector but the next one is is super difficult so just want to get that one out of the way you can see how tight we are on the first corner just getting in those the inside there's almost like a little mini crest dip in the road that you can aim for through the, through that first corner it's really crucial to do that breaking before the bump you can see we actually we're relatively tight and it's a it's a relatively sort of mid corner apex to be honest it's not a really late apex because you're going to lose too much speed on the entry so here we are coming into island corner then and the first thing you need to be looking at to spot your braking point you can see we're already turning a little bit at this point right but really it's the two sort of red signs on the right hand side and, and specifically for me it's the it's the curbing just before that so if i put a little sort of green dot up there where i'm looking at this one just as soon as i get to that point i know i need to be turning more and i need to sort of have a little dab of the brakes to get the weight on the nose of the car and this one in gt3 it's not too bad right because because you've got so much aero that it's quite consistent. I mean, GT4, these cars don't have a lot of aero. You're doing 131 miles an hour coming into it. It's the fastest point in the track, and you're going to be sliding. So I dab the brakes, and again, I'm using the throttle just to mat just to marry up the grip on the car, just to keep it stable. We're aiming to clip a little bit of that inside curb. And you can see I drop down into fourth, floor it, and we get that lovely slide on that sort of four-wheel drift through there, which shoots me back over to the left-hand side of the track where I'm looking for this little tiny little. It's it's kind of you can miss this super easily. Little uh, dust marking on the left hand side, which is the breaking point for GT3 and GT4 actually. Um, it's slightly early in this Alpine, but in cars like the McLaren and the Camaro, that's going to be your point for sure. And hard on the brakes to start with, and then again trailing off really nicely. You need to keep this in the groove. Look at the banking of this corner. Okay, we're already on the power through Shell's Shell Oil's corner. Sorry, a little bit of sponsorship there. Um, as soon as you're past that point, you need to be back on full power, okay? There's a, a nasty bump there, which you need to avoid. That's absolutely fine. But it's all about staying on that inside line. The breaking point for this, super, super difficult. We're going to spend a bit of time on this one, guys. Super difficult chicane is this pylon on the right-hand side. If that disappears in the race for whatever reason, I guarantee it almost might. There's a there's a, um, a, a dirt marking just below it as well, where they've probably, all the masters have stood to try and get the pylon back up, right? The aim is to get over this curbing as flat as you can and as straight as you can. Um, you can see, again, I'm using the brake and the throttle just to modulate the car. And what we're going to do is, once we're over this curb, we're going to just hit the brake a little bit harder to get the weight on the nose so we can almost get that jab of rotation through into the right-hander. And then as soon as we know we're clear, we're not going to cut this in GT4 because the cars are really quite low. Uh, well, this Alpine is anyway. You can get away with it in some others, but don't cut this in the lower cars. And as soon as you're free, it's sort of three-quarters throttle. And then when you know you've got the grip, you're away and up the hill into what is another really difficult chicane, which we'll tackle in a minute. So let's, let's look at that again. Um, let's do it in slow-mo. This might seem a bit extreme, but we're breaking on the pylon. Try and break it in as straight a line as possible. We come off the brakes, do a little bit of turning, straighten up the turning, then jab on the brake again. All this time we're using the throttle to marry up the car. And then we're on that sort of 60% throttle to stabilise it. And then we know we're free up and across hilltop. Coming into the next little section then, again, super difficult. It's got a quite easy um, breaking point, really. You've got this sign on the left-hand side, but again, if that goes for any reason, it probably will because people are going to be hustle and bustle through here. You've got the Marshall Post just a little bit further on. Again, in this Alpine, because it's got such good brakes, we're slightly after the sign, which is a little bit frustrating, but in other cars, it's going to be your breaking point, and in GT3. So braking hard again. You can take this curb in GT4. Not a lot, but you can take it a little bit. I advise not to do that in GT3. You can take it a little bit, and our aim through here is to basically take as much speed through this right-hander as possible, stay as tight as we can through the left-hander, so we set ourselves up really nicely for Nickerbrook Corner, which is really difficult and has got a great name. You can see I cut that quite a lot, get this overseas snap, but the point we're aiming for, it doesn't really matter how you get to it, is this little dip in the white line. It's difficult to see. I've highlighted it there. And that's the point where we need to be off the throttle. We're not going to brake for this corner. We're not going to brake for Druids. It is off throttle. Let the car rotate on its own. So you need a good setup for this nice even preload differential uh, and we're gonna you can cut this more than i do but you can see how quickly we're back on the power and as soon as we know we're free again accelerating up the hill 
you can go on this curb but don't stay on it you must come off the curb immediately if you stay on this in some of the shorter wheelbase cars it is gonna you're gonna flick round you're gonna hit that yellow van on the right hand side right I've done it about ten times it's um it's very frustrating up clay hill then um, and it <laughs> It's just such a difficult section. So let's look at it from above and then we'll, we'll watch it again. So relatively easy, fast corner. Looking for that little dust marking. Stay really on the inside. Pause it here. Look, it's not a V corner. We're proper staying on the inside here because you need to... The, the road just guides you around. You can use that by stepping on the power. Very easy. Straightening up that steering. You've got a bit of room on the outside there. Now, trying to get this point as close to this pole as well as possible straighten up the steering jab the brakes to get the rotation you see how the car darts to the right hand side when we do that you've got to get that balance so a, a, a lot of you're going to struggle with that to start with but i assure you it's worth it braking just after the marshal post you can clobber this curb a little bit just carry as much speed cut this slightly probably not as me as much as me because i get that oversteer and then try and get as straight an exit as possible while avoiding as much of that curb or to the end of the curb as possible and then up the hill we go. Now, super difficult corner this. It's difficult to get the balance between speed and turn in here. So it really does depend on what car you're in. Again, look, I'm on brakes and I'm still on the power here just to keep that little bit of um, just little bit of stability. What we're going to do, we're going to be going down to fourth gear. And as we hit the apex of the first right-hander in this little section, we're going to be dropping down another gear. Obviously, that depends on what car you're in. But it's just to get that initial sort of turn in. And then when you know you're free, you can see how tight we are here through Druids. It is super super difficult to do this live but it's well worth it because you'll gain a couple of tenths into the final corner it, as soon as you know you're at this point where you've got you felt the front of the car bite and you've got that grip you need to be aiming for the start of that curb or just just after it because there's quite a lot of room on the outside and even if you do run a bit wide yes it might be a track warning but you're not going to spin or anything like that it's not too bumpy so there's quite a bit of, of runoff there to use under the bridge under the Alton Park bridge into what is the final corner and again we're blessed with this great braking marker but uh, it's probably going to go in the race because you know people like knocking them down so we've got the little dirt mark just before which i've highlighted there it's quite difficult to see at speed but once you know where it is it's kind of uh, it's kind of there and actually if that marker does get knocked down a lot of the time it leaves like a little footing where it was so it's not too bad um we're going to be braking hard again this is all about how we come off the brakes and get on the power so you don't actually have to hit the apex too much on this one you're almost aiming to be straight and and getting and maximizing the exit when you when you go through that pylon on the right hand side avoid the curb because it will just bump the car and you're going to lose a lot of momentum into the what is the start finish um straight in inverted commas you've got a lot of room on the exit here guys as soon as you're st steering is straight make sure you're on full power and use that exit through deer leap and we're away for another lap um really really technical let's look at that final section again in full speed because this this one is the corner really where you gain the time just on that half that 50 percent break and as soon as you know you're clear it's all about staying on the inside there and sort of hanging on for dear life but without scrubbing the front tires too much i can't stress that enough breaking in as straight a line as possible and it's all about maximizing the exit here you can see how smooth it was on the power there using all the curb on the left hand side and just keeping it nice and straight over the start finish line not as technical as the middle section but one very difficult corner so we'll look at it again from above you can see how i come off the power just to get that turn in there and then i'm full power again where i know i'm not going to scrub my tires really really key breaking in a straight line as possible you can see i actually miss the apex almost on purpose on on this one i do break just slightly too late but i maximize the straightness of my exit here using the curb where it goes dark there absolutely fine and away we go guys i hope that was helpful we're going to play through the, the laps in in full now but if you're not subscribed to the channel already do so and hit that bell icon because we've got loads more of these to do i'm going to go through all the british gt tracks in gt3 and gt4 uh, and then we've got some some more to sort of get through uh, across both classes so that the content's going to come thick and fast over the next few weeks which is great 
Um, so do stick around, do subscribe and get in the Discord for added sort of notes and things. And, and if you want to support the channel a bit more detail, then then do hit that um, sort of channel membership button. There are a few different tiers on there which work well. So through Island Corner then, get that rotation just by hitting the brake a little bit, looking for that marking on the left-hand side, using the camera, the road, make sure you carry some good speed, a minimum speed of 50 mile an hour through there, uh, avoiding the bump on the outside, you need a good setup for there. To, to, you just need to try and conquer how to get over that bump jabbing the steer jabbing the brake to get the steer in for that right hander and as soon as you know you're rotated you straighten up the steering plant the throttle and away you are up through hilltop looking for the marshall post or the sign on the left hand side make sure you carry as much speed through this right hander as possible to allow you to get left and stay left looking for that little bump in the road in the white line to as your turn in point where you need to be off throttle and try to maximize the exit up the hilltop you lose a lot of speed especially in tt4 if you don't get that exit through there staying nice and tight on the inside here you can if you carry more speed you probably will just understeer off the track here so it's all about getting that turn in through there and being confident and when you're not going to scrub the tires further braking in a straight line into the final corner nice and gentle nice and smooth on the power building up the power so you don't get that kick of oversteer if you suddenly park the throttle and away on the lap we go let's look at it in total from above because i know you guys love this view and i really like it as well I, every time i watch this I, I seem to pick up something else to sort of think about as we're keeping this tight line through this first section really trying to hug the inside curb and as soon as we know we're clear we're on the power but make sure you don't run too wide it's all about getting that rotation braking before the sign you can see how early it is in the corner actually we use that throttle just to adjust the car just the speed that mid corner speed which is where you gain all of that time in gt4 as well as that smooth smooth exit coming into island corner then just a quick jab of the brakes back on the power drop down a gear if we need a little bit more rotation immediately over to the left hand side you don't have to stay on the left hand side there you can brake on the inside which is a good overtaking sort of tip i guess as straight as possible over the bump so you don't get that kick of oversteer brake straight come off the brakes slightly to get that turn and then jab the brakes to go right immediately on that sort of 60 percent power to stabilize the back end of the car over through hilltop looking for the marshal post and the sign on the left hand side Take as much speed through this right-hander as possible. Stay tight in the left-hander. I probably cut this a little bit too much. Looking for that little kink off power. Wait till the nose bites and then we're back on full power. Don't use too much of the curb for too long. If you do, just be a bit cautious on the throttle. All about staying tight through this left right-hander then. Breaking a nice straight line, getting that rotation, staying tight. Be a bit hesitant if you want. It's better to be slightly later on the throttle through there than slightly early because you will be understeering off and you'll be scrubbing the tyres. You'll, you'll wear them out faster. You'll heat them up. It's just not going to be good for you. A straighter exit as possible over the start-finish line. And that is the ultimate track guide for Alton Park and GT4, guys. I'll leave you with it. hope you enjoyed it. See you on the next one.